Guys, welcome to the video. Uh, today's video is going to be just all over the place. It's basically like three parts or maybe more than that. Uh, none of these parts were really detailed enough and good enough to make one video out of. And I just decided I'm just going to combine them all together, make a video out of several different parts. Uh, maybe even throw a little hanger stuff in there. But anyway, we start off with a quick trip, quick, hot, smoky trip uh, out to Utah. Mesa. Uh, it's outside of Grand Junction. It's a private strip uh, and I was lucky enough to get access to use but uh, they got a little bit of a, they got a short grass strip on one end which is awesome. It was a miserable flight over honestly. It was hot and windy. Landed here it was 100 degrees out still probably 90. So wasn't the nicest flight over but I knew that going into it. That's why I went later in the evening because the wind was going to die down. It was bad midday. And I had to work, ended up having to work today. I couldn't couldn't get out of work and head over early. So anyway, there's some amazing flying opportunities over here on this this side. So it's kind of a bummer that it is a little bit far away to kind of do my normal day trip kind of thing, you know. Standing here waiting. My girlfriend's gonna pick me up. Uh she's been over here all week. Her folks live over here, and uh so I just came over to join them for the weekend. And we're hoping tomorrow we might be able to get away just for a little bit and uh, pop over into Utah, maybe go over to Mexican Mountain or something like that. I'd like to show her that area real quick. As you can see, the smoke rolled in heavy the next day, and uh, you know it's unfortunate. I checked a couple of airports in the area, and they all reported around six mile visibility, although I'm not sure that's quite accurate, which can be the case with smoke for sure. Uh, you know, it was enough to not run into anything and to see where I was going and to see where I could land in an emergency and all that. It's it, uh, it looks pretty bad on video, but it was doable. Anyway, I hoped when we got there, I'd hope maybe down there in the canyons, it just, you know, wouldn't be quite as bad, so we pushed on.
right guys we're here in mexican mountain you know it's 90 degrees it's not time you know the time of year to camp but of course the smoke is a real bummer but down here it's not nearly as bad and it's just freaking beautiful god this place every time i come here i'm just so blown away it's amazing how nice it really is you know even with these conditions so we're just going to hang out for a while i mean just god this place is just it's something to see you guys camera does not do it justice when you're down in here looking at this massive wall of rock it is mind-blowing all right what do you think of mexican mountain it's pretty um amazing that's it you can look at it <laughs> it's just pretty amazing yeah it's really awesome i love the rock layers this it is, is pretty like, cool seriously one of the coolest places yeah it really is Great. still probably 90 degrees out here even though it's like 7 30 but uh i had to take off a little bit of a tailwind it's a light tailwind so it's not enough to be too big a factor and uh but anyway yeah we're gonna head back into colorado call it a day pretty freaking cool it was fun to get over here and stop here definitely coming back this fall hopefully more than once um you know end up at mexican mountain and a few other spots gonna do some utahing uh this fall <laughs> So I was coming back from Grand Junction and I'm south of Aspen up over the top of a big mess of 14ers. It's a fairly inaccessible, very rugged part of Colorado. And I'm up real high, it's super smoky, I can't see very well. And I start noticing I've got the number three cylinders running hot, which is, it's actually the other rear cylinder. I'm on this side uh, because there's no more light over here. But anyway, uh, so I start playing with the ignition because uh, when your EGTs go up, it could be the probe, it could be some other things, but it can, it can be the ignition. And the reason is, is when you have two plugs per cylinder, in this case, top and bottom, and they're off to the sides of the cylinder because it was designed for two, when you lose one and now you're starting to burn clear over in the corner on one side, it actually takes longer for that burn to kind of propagate across the cylinder and push on the piston. It's effectively like reducing your timing or retarding your timing a little bit. And when you retard your timing, it's pretty common for your GTs to go up because you're starting the burn later in effectively in a sense. So more of the fire is going out of the exhaust. You're getting less push on the piston. It's less efficient and your exhaust system will run hotter and your EGTs will show that. It was only like a 50 degree increase. It put me in the upper 1400s. It wasn't a dangerous temperature. It was the fact that it was suddenly above the rest. So anyway, I checked the ignition. Sure enough, I'd shut off one side and I'd start getting a pretty bad misfire on that, that number three cylinder. So long story short, uh, I've used this spark plug wire before, never had any trouble, but it's, it's the Rotex replacement wire that was available on CPS for a while. And I noticed they don't sell it anymore. And maybe they had some issues too. It doesn't seem to stand up to heat as well as some of the other stuff. So I've had to really shield it now uh, to pre prevent this from happening. But what had happened is the wire got hot and it actually got thinner. You could see it, it like thinned down and that elongated it this way, which effectively pulled the wire back away from the inside here where it's threaded on. Those ends just thread on the wire. It's kind of hokey, I'm not a big fan of it. And uh, it pulled it back. Now it was still touching, but it kind of pulled it back to where it didn't have a good bite on the wire. I think what it was is the spark plugs had, you know, 70 hours on them and they had opened up a few thousands like they tend to do. And the gap was just finally big enough that up high it would misfire. When I came back down, I tested it and didn't have any trouble down low, but 
you know, it's that's that actually can happen that way. So anyway, what I did is I, I leave all these wires along, I cut it back, got a fresh bite, cleaned everything up, you know, gapped the plugs all just a little bit tighter, uh, put it back together, took it out, went up to 15.5, never missed a beat, tested it thoroughly, and no more issues. So thankfully, that's all it was. Because when it starts being ignition components, um, man, it starts getting expensive. And the thing about these systems is everything has to be right, especially when they're turboed. And you've got more cylinder pressure, you're trying to you know, light off, uh, send a spark through. Because uh, that, that actually, there's actually a resistance there. When that cylinder is under pressure, uh, it's harder for that spark to jump. And it's easier to blow out spark. And these self-powering units like the CDI boxes on here or even magnetos, they don't make a really good strong spark like a car does where you've got, you know, really high-powered ignition system. Like I say, it's, it's working good now. I, I shielded it really well, so hopefully won't have any more issues. Well, made it back to Table Mountain. <clears throat> it's been a long time since I've been up here. I was with my last plane, actually. It's a pretty impressive spot. The rock wall along the face of this mountain is really something to see. It's at 10,000. Pretty, pretty awesome spot. Got a little rain coming in here. But uh, it's really treacherous up here. There's a lot of rocks and they're really hard to see. And I found a new section here that was very smooth until I went to taxi up the hill and then there were some rocks, so I had to kind of work up it slowly. But the actual spot I landed, I had a pretty good crosswind, but there was somewhat of a headwind component. That's why I used it. It was a little bit downhill on part of it, but not bad. It's a treacherous spot because they're, they're hiding up here all over the place. But man, is it an awesome place. Totally awesome. Yeah, here's the stuff I'm talking about. Just hiding down these weeds and really hard to see, but that's, <laughs> those rocks are a foot tall plus. That would be life altering, running into one of those up here. 
Last time I landed further to the, I guess it'd be more the south, southeast. And the mountain is a little bit more impressive over there. The rocky drop-offs are a little more straight down, a little taller. I think it's, they're about 900 foot drop-off over there. And, uh, but when I got here, the wind was coming, you know, this way. So I was able to land this way and utilize it a little bit. The other spot down there, wind was all wrong. Now it's calm. Of course it's dead calm, so I don't have any help from the wind to take off. That's normal. Fortunately, I can't utilize this part of the hill from where I'm standing up to the plane. Um, as it gets really rocky up there in the two track and the way I wanna aim turns and goes out between those trees. So I can take off in a turn, start somewhere right about here. It's a little uphill. Uh, at about the top of the hill, I'm turning right and heading out that direction and should be fine. Got just a little bit of a breeze to kind of help me, but it's just a bummer because it negates the whole hill here I've got. So it's sprinkling pretty good. The view though, holy cow. You know, video doesn't do it justice. When you're standing here on this edge, it's really something. All right, guys, thanks for joining. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. I know it was a little bit all over the place, but uh, I thought all those things were worthy to at least be in a video. So we just combined them. But uh, thanks for watching. Um, I want to say a big thanks to my Patreons. I've picked up some new ones uh, since the last video. Thank you guys very much. And one little thing I'm doing now is I'm, I'm on, for, on there for the Patreons. I'm putting uh, locations of some of these spots. Um, coordinates screenshots of uh you know google earth and different things just to kind of show where some of these areas are at i had some requests from some of those guys who are fellow pilots who are interested in maybe visiting some of those spots at some point and also um some guys some of you guys are uh if, you know on the flight sim and said hey you know i don't live around there but i'd like to hit that on the simulator if nothing else so that's kind of a perk I've started to do. Um, one, of, one of my patrons said it best. He said, you know, we, we subscribe to help support what you're doing. We don't expect really anything in return in a sense, but you know, little perks like that uh, also are really cool. And I'm like, hey, that's, that's a great point. And absolutely so. Anyway, that's just one little thing uh, I'm doing now for the Patreons. So uh, thank you guys very much. Um, thanks for the new subscribers. Uh, since that last video where I was asking for that. Appreciate that, you guys. Uh, keep them coming. Please subscribe if you haven't. It really helps. And uh, again, thanks thanks to the Patreons, um, both the new ones and those of you guys that have stuck around a long time. It means a lot. Thank you, guys. You guys know the deal. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Mm -hmm.